please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. This is Bazaar Morning Call, live from the CNBC TV 18 headquarters in Mumbai. Good morning. Welcome to Bazaar Morning Call. I'm Lata and with me Anuj and Sonia and it's a bright new contract, the May contract. But uh, let's celebrate the April, co April contract first. Uh, uh, green on the screen even globally and I think the main theme that's standing out is growth has triumphed over inflation fears. That really was uh, the theme over the past week or so when uh, Yields went to 3% and 3.02 in the US. Uh, but the point is growth is so good, it can take that uh, kind of cost of money. And yesterday, uh, the, uh, results from uh, Facebook, from Chipotle, from AMD, all demonstrated that uh, growth is... Uh, absolutely in fine fettle and I think after earning after result markets they also got Microsoft and I heard one of the CNBC anchors at the time saying we can't even believe these numbers are real uh, they're apparently so good so anyway bond yields have subsided below three percent the global queues uh, in terms of growth are extremely strong and the ultimately Indian markets will move along with the global tide as well but in India, again, many earnings have been very good, barring access. And in any case, the Nifty has ended at the higher end of its trading band. Uh, there is every reason today to perhaps uh, vault uh, above that trading band of 10,630. But I'll leave that to the expert. Uh, mm -hmm. Good morning. Hi, good morning, uh, Lata. Good morning, Anujya. So, you know, as Lata was pointing out, 10,600 has been taken out, but yesterday was expiry as well. So, there were a lot of factors playing out. Uh, the good part is that we have got good earnings, especially from the likes of Yes Bank, etc. So, that perhaps could propel the markets ahead. But what's the sense you're getting about how the start of the new series could play out? Will this 10,600 level be a pivot point? Uh, will we be able to take it out? Morning, Sonia. Uh, you know, uh, just before that, uh, we was talking about uh, TCS uh, reaching $100 billion market cap, right? Uh, yesterday, the FANG group added $90 billion market mm. cap. Uh, yeah. Facebook alone added $40 billion market cap in a single trading session. Uh, so, I just, just remarkable, uh, yeah. those stats. So, you know, the CNBC anchor talking about, are these earnings real? Sometimes I wonder, are, are these market caps real? But anyway, the f mode for the market is firmly buy on dips. Uh, and, you know, that's the point I made yesterday as well, that don't, to look at Wednesday as any kind of breakdown because uh, that's not the case. And yesterday, the closing, the mm -hmm. closing is highest since Feb 5. Uh, April series was so good that we finally closed at the highest point. And uh, there's a good chance that today also uh, the buy on dips mode continues. Uh, mm -hmm. What the SGX Nifty is reflecting, and once again, SGX could get it wrong because it's been the case for the last four or five days, is actually now May futures. And May futures obviously will start at a premium. So mm -hmm. uh, you'll have to adjust that. Uh, uh, the Nifty has some unfinished business at 10,700 to 750. In fact, my base case was that that could have happened in April in itself, series. but uh, it, it didn't. So perhaps in May series it will happen. Uh, yes, banks' earnings should keep the bank Nifty in good yeah. stead. Uh, I think uh, that's the point we made yesterday as well in closing bell that you know 10% re-rating is on the card. It happened yesterday itself, 10%. So I don't know how much follow through is left in that one. Uh, the bigger question is how much of access's numbers is in the price. Uh, uh, don't kid us. You know we don't want to kid ourselves. The fact is that. The market knew about it, uh, mm -hmm. that Access Bank is going to report a bit of a loss. That uh, it was a loss because they didn't pay advance exactly. taxes. Exactly. And you know, from 5.30, the stock had gone down to 4.90. And in the last 10, 15 minutes, it actually rallied a bit, perhaps because of expiry. So, so the uh, only problem there is they have guided for recovery in the mm -hmm. second half. Mm -hmm. exactly. So the market may be a, a little worried about near-term value. Also, you know, uh, and of course, this is not to absolve Access Bank. Uh, horrible numbers mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, uh, if mm -hmm. it was a PSU bank, uh, it would be trading at 200 and, mm -hmm. you know, we would be all, uh, you know, going after uh, the, mm -hmm. the, the management, management uh, <laughs> like like anything. Uh, somehow, you know, uh, uh, the, the private bank's uh, managements do get away. But the point here is uh, uh, Shikha Sharma is on her way out. We know that now. Uh, and the market is betting on some, some big personality to head uh, Access Bank next. So, uh, anyway, that, that's a different debate. Uh, on the bank nifty, I think first hour low would be a significant, uh, or 24,800 would be a decent stop loss for traders. On the nifty, around 10,550 should be a decent uh, stop. 
for the overall market over a medium term it really is the leader now and i'm not talking about day to day because intraday anything could happen overall it is the leader and pharma has started to join in so that would be a space to factor in uh, also today reliance would come out with numbers post market hours so the market would factor that in as well in last hour of trade Okay. All right, and uh, as you were pointing out, you know a lot of big delivery-based buying seen yesterday. Yes, Bank saw about 500 crores of delivery-based buying yesterday, but that, it was not alone. ITC, Infosys, all these heavyweights saw about 400 to 500 crores of delivery-based no, buying. And Reliance m could have the uh, ability to uh, take the index uh, higher several paces mm -hmm. because, of course, there will be more contribution from Geo this time. I mean, anything more to add on that since both of you track it so closely? Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, uh, on Reliance, the, of course, standard disclaimer applies. You know, mm. Reliance owns uh, the company, uh, TV18 and Network18, that run the channels in TV18. I think uh, more than Geo, yeah, so we've been talking about Geo. There's a little bit of that as well a becoming that as well. contributor. But uh, I, I think uh, on refining and Petchem, uh, key would be on refining because after a long time, you're expecting a bit of a softness uh, in refining. Margins. But look, uh, Reliance is known to surprise on the positive side and they are very close to delivering 10,000 crores of uh, quarterly profit. Yes. Uh, so... Uh, uh, and I, I tell you one more thing, uh, you know, uh, TCS overtaking Reliance in market cap and being the $100 billion <laughs> company, that race is well and truly on. And, you know, you mm -hmm. will you'll see, uh, you know, uh, Reliance catching up at some point. Uh, but I'll leave it to Sonia because uh, she has done the poll this time. <laughs> no, of course, you know, as we were discussing yesterday, Anush, mm. Petchem is the big growth driver this time. Yeah. And on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, we are expecting almost a 15% growth in the Petchem EBIT. Mm. So there could be two swing factors. One is telecom. If it gives you that 800 crore profit compared mm. to 500 crores last quarter, then that's a 300 crore, you know, swing. But Petchem is the big growth driver. Yeah. So I guess that's another number. No, for me, you it was not all that. Surging, uh, yeah. I mean, it wasn't all that. It's just that... The, ability of the group to surprise on the uh, upside yeah. and the sheer weight it has on the nifty yeah. so at the moment we are only discussing nifty and if a big heavyweight uh, can uh, you know vault higher with uh, even slightly better than expected earnings then that's enough for the range to be broken uh, yeah. my limited point was that that it's, it's a large stock and therefore if it surprises on the upside the ability of the nifty to break ranges is very high Okay, well, let's take a look at what our wise experts have to say. It's going to be a long trading day, lots of stocks to look at. Uh, in his weekly blog, Greed and Fear, Chris Wood of CLSA says that the spread between the US 10 year and the two year Treasury bond yields declined from a recent high of 78 basis points in mid February to 43 basis points on the 17th of April, the lowest level since September 2007. Though it has since risen to 54 basis points, Chris adds that Greed and Fear's base case remains that the top end of the channel, which is in place since the beginning of the bull market in treasuries back in 1981, will hold. So the top end will hold, he says. Okay. Uh, well, uh, let's uh, get to the... Uh, okay, there's more. Uh, Chris Wood has also written on the Asian subcontinent. He says that Green and Fear will add two percentage points to the allocation in Korea in the Asia-Pacific ex-Japan relative return portfolio. This will be paid for by shaving the overweight in India by a further one percentage point and reducing... Taiwan by one percentage point. All right, so not so bullish on India. Okay, let's also get you some money market views and tell you what to expect on the rupee uh, and the dollar today. Bhaskar Panda of HDFC Bank says the political backdrop is changing as South Korean and North Korean leaders meet. The dollar index holds gains as ECB keeps its tap open. Draghi's comment that overall growth is expected to remain solid and broad-based was well accepted. Yet, Bhaskar adds that the rupee remains under pressure against the dollar, though some pressure could ease going forward. He expects to see a trading range of 6680 to 66 seven against the dollar today. Well, I'll come to the bonds in a minute, Anuj. Uh, just to remind you, you may even remember this. It was in August of 2013 that uh, Chris Wood and CLSA were as bearish on India as possible and they didn't see the big U-turn that came thereafter. They missed that U-turn and joined the bandwagon only much later. So, uh, I mean, just to put it that last time uh, Chris Wood was uh, bearish, uh, uh, that's not how it played out. Uh, they got on, of course, after the Modi victory became imminent. But from August to February or March, uh, CLSA was out of whack with uh, what yes. was happening. Well, on the bonds front, uh, uh, Bhaskar Panda adds that the yield on the benchmark 10-year bond is expected to trade within the range of uh, 7.74 to 7.80. That's uh, a very, very narrow market. Anyways. Okay, overnight it was about the NASDAQ and of course the, the, the FANG group uh, with the massive market cap addition. Here's Manglam with the world view.
Well, when earnings do well, markets do well. So that's the kind of moves that we saw on the Dow yesterday. It rallied about 200 plus points, led higher by Nasdaq because, well, Facebook. Yesterday we were talking about it that it added close to around 7% in pre uh, in after hours trade, but during uh, trade, Facebook added close to around 9%. Adding to that, we had advanced micro devices too. That one moved higher by 14%. You were talking about Fang. Amazon yet hasn't reacted uh, from the QSR space. Both Chipotle and Domino's beat estimates. Chipotle moved higher by about 24%, and Domino's told Jubilant Foodworks that I can move to. From the QSR space itself, an important development that Subway will shut 500 stores in the US, but they will add 1,000 worldwide, and India is one of those countries where they will add more stores. So we'll keep an eye out on that. Amazon, now that one will uh, uh, will support the markets today because that one rose about 7.5% in after hours trade after the EPS beat estimates, and Amazon itself in after hours added close to $50 billion in market cap, which is as much as ITC's market cap is right now. The 10 10-year yield slipped back from that 3% mark, so sub 3% now, 2.975 as we speak. And ECB too kept the interest rates unchanged. So talking about the ECB, European markets were fairly in the green. Emerging markets too did fairly well, the outperformer being Brazil out there with a gain of 1.6%. Asian markets as we speak have opened uh, in the green and the SGX Nifty indicating a gap up opening. So it's uh, fairly a green screen across the world. Okay, thank you very much for that. Uh, uh, that's as green as green can get. Uh, well, uh, before we take a break and get to all the micros in terms of the top 10 list of stocks, we'll watch. Uh, here's some opinion. Cash levels are low globally. That's the word we got from Ruta Sharma of Morgan Stanley Investment Management, an exclusive chat with CNBC. Uh, Ruta Sharma shares his outlook on global growth moment. Dollar really hasn't reacted much to this uh, change because this is very much a US-centered event in terms of what's going on. So if you look at the dollar, it, uh, it has barely budged, uh, like even over the past few months as interest rates have gone up. And this, I think, is something which should help international markets a bit because the dollar is still in a bear market. Yeah. So if you look at the history of the dollar, the dollar tends to move in long cycles of about five to seven years uh, within a range. And we're just two years into the dollar bear market after having had a bull market for five to six years. So I think that is something which provides some cushion, I think, to international markets. But there's no doubt that the U.S. is the most expensive market out there, and the price of money is changing out here at a time when economic growth also seems to have peaked globally. I think that the big sort of issue here is the fact that we have had this massive bull market, but there are three Ds which have always been a concern, which I think are going to come back into focus. And for me, those three Ds basically are demographics, deglobalization, and debt. I think that, we, uh, that those three Ds are going to come back much more into focus in the conversation over the next few quarters. And I think that this demographic point is still so misunderstood that why can't economic growth go back to 3 4%? Uh, percent. When your labor force is growing at such a slow pace, it's so hard right. to sort of you know, get back to those sort of growth rates, and we still have that anchoring bias. All right, that's an important uh, point he makes. Demographics, deglobalization, and debt. They're going to be the three Ds to watch out for. And don't rule out more debt coming on board. Uh, we'll take a break on that note. We'll keep getting you snippets of that conversation through the course of the day. But on the other side of the break, we'll get you CNBC TV 18's top 10 list of stocks to watch. Uh, for now, the Asian markets are, uh, some of them are actually doing quite well after what happened on Wall Street, but everyone's still reeling under that f historic summit where North Korea and South Korea met and shook hands for the first time in a decade. That's the big talking point that we've had over the Asian markets. Of course, our own markets are also doing pretty well. Let's see how the last trading day shapes up. Um, our research team is here to give you the list of top 10 stocks to watch for the day. Anuj, what are you looking at? Okay, uh, Sonia, just a trivia, you know, which, which is the biggest compounding banking stock in India over the last 10 yes, years? Yes, bank. Uh, it's actually Kotak Mahindra Bank. Okay. Uh, oh, really? Uh, yeah, yesterday it hit all-time high. It's a stronger bank than HDFC Bank. And, uh, you know, uh, just just see the, the chart of uh, Kotak Mahindra Bank, uh, phenomenal. Uh, you know, it, uh, this is, of course, not a day call. It's just, you know, my mm. memory jogs back to 2000. Three it Three. was uh, yeah. when you know the rules. Uh, Kotak had a JV with Goldman Sachs. Uh, DSP had a uh, you know JV with Merrill Lynch, and GM had a uh, uh, you know venture with uh, Morgan Stanley. And the rules were put in place uh, where you know there couldn't have been the foreign ownership. Uh, so DSP sold the stake uh, to Merrill Lynch. Uh, uh, GM sold the stake to Morgan Stanley. Kotak bought the stake bought from the Goldman Sachs, and you know that was telling about the the big. Mm -hmm. grow, you know, mm -hmm. bet that Oday Kotek was taking. Anyway, from that point, of course, it's been a hundred bagger. But uh, 
all time high yesterday as well a big delivery based buying so just one of those compounding stocks that you should buy on all dips uh, the other stock of course much smaller stock manapuram that bounced back from 20 dma yesterday four times jump in delivery volumes though a lot of that was because of expiry factor but that would be something that uh, i'll keep an eye on Okay, and I guess today the market is going to watch Axis Bank. Uh, just to uh, reiterate the numbers, first quarterly loss in the bank's history, it was 2001, uh, nearly 2,200 crore in terms of losses. But then uh, the details uh, show that perhaps uh, a lot of the poison is out. Slippages have come in at 16,500 compared to 4,400 uh, in the previous quarter. Gross NPLs have jumped to 6.8 from 5.3. Uh, or thereabouts, but the important point is the non-NPA stressed book, that is their good book, uh, but stressed, that has fallen from 27,000 crore to 12,000 crore. So they've taken out a large part of uh, the stress and recognized it. As well, uh, uh, restructured book also uh, has uh, been largely recognized. The growth factors, deposits have grown by about 10.9% on the quarter. And low-cost deposits, I think this must be a record. It must be the highest. It is 54% of their total book. Uh, with 10% of the growth coming in one quarter itself. So it looks well shored up uh, in terms of having enough uh, 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 wherewithal, both in terms of deposits and capital, even in terms of capital well provided for a couple of years of growth. And therefore, growth can ameliorate a lot of the wounds that will come in the next two quarters as well in terms of recognition. The market may still want to sell off the stock because the ma management guided that uh, credit cost that is provisioning will start falling in the second half of the current year so high provisioning is to be expected in these two quarters as well q1 and q2 and the market may take time to uh, you know once again bid the stock up i, I would expect red first on the stock okay red first on the okay. stock uh, by the way news was flashing on the screen uh, sonia of course uh, alerted us yesterday that loda group could file for ipo and that has happened this morning. Uh, but uh, let's move on. Ekta, Biocon's numbers uh, look good? Yes, in fact, the top line looked good. And we had spoken about this yesterday as well. So the revenue growth was 25% uh, uh, this quarter versus expectations of 17%, led by the biologics as well as uh, the research services segment. The margins, however, missed estimates, came in at 20% versus expectations of 21 to 22 odd percent. And the profit was a little subdued, just about flat on a year on year basis. The call is at 9 a.m. this morning, so maybe the stock will move based on commentary as well. Okay, we'll await more details from the call. Ekta, thanks a lot for that. Biocon, of course, has been one of the best performing stocks in the pharma space uh, this year. But let's find out more on what happened with AU Small Finance. They reported their numbers yesterday. Abhishek, how did it look? Well, Sonia, to begin with, you know, the balance sheet has doubled. So the loan growth at 103% YOY is very positive, looking at the fact that even on a sequential basis, the loan growth is anywhere between 32 to 30 33%. Asset quality has improved. So the gross NP has now reduced to 2% versus 2.8% in the previous quarter. However, due to the fact that operating expenses are uh, growing at a faster rate than balance sheet, the operating profit remains subdued and therefore the earnings were below estimate. Expect a green on the stock today. Okay, Abhishek, don't go away. You've got more on your plate. Uh, Shriram City Union? Shiram City Union, the loan growth has picked up after four quarters of loan growth decline. So that is a positive sign. However, due to the fact that they transited to 90 days past due recognition from 120 days past due, the gross NPA actually picked up. So the gross NPA is now at 9% versus 6.77% in the previous quarter. Disbursements remain subdued, growing at just 6% on a YOY and about 4.5% on a quarter on quarter basis. That is what led to net profit being below. Uh, estimates. Expect a slight red on the stock today. Okay, net profit below estimates for Sriram City Union. Thanks for that. But Lata, IDBI Bank mired in controversy. Yes, uh, CBI has filed uh, uh, chart sheets against uh, 15 former bankers for a 600 crore loan given to a company called Axel, which belongs to the Shiva Group. They believe that uh, that loan was given so that the Shiva Group can pay back other loans. Uh, now, uh, I just want to add a personal note over here. Uh, some of the people who have been uh, named in the FIR, like uh, Melvin Rego, now chairman of Syndicate, uh, managing director of Syndicate Bank. There's also Kishore Kharath, but uh, Melvin Rego, a person I know personally well. I mean, 
largely because of the coverage of the banking sector, I think the CBI is doing a major disservice. Okay. Uh, this, you know, ham-handed approach, uh, some of the finest bankers, the most honest human beings that you can see are getting, uh, you know, thrammed in this uh, uh, approach, just looking at any failure as a fraud. All commercial misjudgments are not frauds. And I do hope no witch hunt uh, of this nature continues. Uh, it's, it's going to bring a lot of uh, negativity to the entire public sector banking space. It's a shame that it's being done this way. Okay, and we don't know what the ramifications would be on the on, on the industry as a whole, right? I mean, absolutely, really people will. I mean, I, I believe people just don't want to be in the credit department. Yeah. We'll do anything, but uh, uh, ready to do HR, ready to do uh, you know housekeeping, <laughs> but no, we will not be in the credit department. I mean, you can't put honest men yeah. into so much trouble. Okay, we'll keep tracking that one for you. But let's move on. Jubilant life is also on our radar. Ekta, why is that? Uh, well, the U.S. International Trade Commission has decided to investigate a company, Braco Diagnostics, complaint which was filed in March of 2018 against Jubilant Life's Ruby Fill, which is basically syringes, saying that they have, uh, they have infringed three of their patents. So we could probably expect a little bit of red on that. Okay, Ekta, thanks a lot for that. Uh, Abhishek, what about SBI Life? It was a good set of numbers coming in, Anuj. So the gross premium actually grew by 26% on a YOY basis and about 36% on a sequential basis. Their persistency ratios have also improved. The 13-month persistency ratio is now at 82.3 versus 78.4. 61st month persistency ratio has also improved. The margin has also improved to 16.2 versus 15% YOY. The return on embedded value has also improved. So overall, good set of number. Expect a green on the stock today. It's the ancient Indian tradition uh, when as you age, your children work for you. That's okay. what's happening for SBI. Okay, Yash is here. Uh, PNB, same story. Uh, filing for sale of uh, insurance wing. Well, Lata, I expect three stocks to remain in green today. The first one, as you said, of course, is Punjab National Bank. The second one is Jammu and Kashmir Bank. And the third one is Elpro International. All three stocks on the back of the same news. Sources share with CNBC TV18 that PNB MetLife has filed its draft IPO papers with the insurance regulator IRDA. Now, through this particular IPO, Punjab National Bank is likely to dilute approximately 10% and raise 1,000 to 1,500 crore. And other two stocks, Jammu and Kashmir Bank as well as Elpro International, are also likely to participate in this particular PNB MetLife IPO. Okay, Yash, thanks a lot for that. We'll keep an eye out on that. But Fortis, the board has actually delayed the deliberation on the deal because now I understand, uh, we understand that they've inducted three new people on the board. Ekta? Yes, absolutely. Well, this had come up when Eastbridge had recommended that there should be three new inductees into the board and uh, they had called for an EGM with regards to this. So yesterday, the board met and remember that Renuka Ramnath has anyway stepped down from the expert panel advisory committee. So the board has asked those three panel members who have been recommended or rather three members who've been recommended by Eastbridge to come join the board and uh, hence that was what was deliberated in the board yesterday. They will continue their board meeting today and they have said that they will fo focus on restructuring of the board into today's uh, board meeting as well. So it should be positive news since they are strengthening the board uh, post a lot of criticism on it. Oh, absolutely. And I, Ekta was the first one to point out when all those bids were coming that it's a four-member board. Mm -hmm. Can it take a decision? She wrote an excellent edit on CNBCTV18.com and now I guess everyone's woken up to it. Uh, okay, Sonal, you have a bunch of other results? I'll start with the good ones first. Tata Metallics, uh, Metallics, a good set of numbers. The revenue went up by 36% and that was because revenue growth in the pig iron segment. The margins came in down because of higher cost, but the PAT went up by 37% because of higher other income and also because of lower tax rates. IEX, another good set of numbers. The EBITDA went up by 23%, and the margins also expanded by around 100,000 basis points. They saw volume growth of around 10.5% in this quarter, and also transaction fee grew, grew by around 12%. Expect that stock to be in green today. Jindal Stainless Hisar, that also saw a revenue growth of around 10%. EBITDA went up by 21% because of other expenses going down by around 28%, and finance costs also went down by 18%. Now, on to some bad ones. Automotive stampings, uh, weak set of numbers. 
revenue went up by 8%, but they reported an EBITDA loss versus a profit last year. So expect a red on that stock. Rallis weak set of numbers, higher costs dented their margins. EBITDA was down by 19%. Operating profit margins came at 9% versus 11% last year. That is because other expenses went up by 23% and cost of materials went up by 32%. SL Propac, very flattish set of numbers actually. Revenue went up by 2.5%, but margins came down lower because of higher costs. So expect that stock to be in red as well. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sonal, for putting all that uh, bunch of numbers. But uh, uh, the greens, okay, uh, as many greens as reds. Uh, well, Anisha has got uh, a bunch of other stocks on her radar. Anisha, you ready? Oh, yes, Alap. I'll start with Thermax once uh, because they have a good news coming in in terms of the order win of around 280 crores to set up a captive uh, captive power plant, so that should be in green. Moving on to Sign, where the company has acquired a semiconductor firm in Europe. Now, it's a small acquisition worth $17 million in an all-cash deal, but the good news is that the company says this will be EPS accretive, so that should hold up in the green as well. LNT, wherein they've completed a, a sale of shares in LNT technology as well as LNT Infotech and open market. Now, this removed the overhang on Infotech as well as technology. Given that the company had to sell these shares to meet the minimum public holding requirements, and good news for LNT as well because they get in some extra cash. Moving on to Gati, wherein remember the stock has been in focus, it's up about 19% this week since the company announced that there will be a board meet uh, to discuss getting in a strategic investor. Now, the board meet happened yesterday, but it was a bit of anticlimax because nothing really came out in terms of information. They have just said that they're looking to get in a strategic investor, so the stock might uh, see a bit of profit booking happening in trade today. Moving on to Hawking Skooker, where that should hold up in green because the popular investor Purinju Velia's funds have bought around a 70, 80,000 shares in the company, respectively, uh, coming to around 1.6% stake. So that should also be in focus today. Back to you. Okay, thanks a lot for that. But of course, everyone will look at Axis Bank and the reaction to the numbers. Abhishek is with us to tell us what brokerages have made of the numbers this quarter. Abhishek? Well, Sonia, brokerages are saying that, you know, expect the non-watch list or the non-NPL book uh, slippages to remain elevated and therefore provision, that is, uh, NPA provisions to remain elevated for the next two quarters. The operating profits from here onwards can improve because Axis Bank has increased their lending rates and the loan growth is also on the he healthier side which should actually uh, make them improve their net interest margin from current level of 3.3%. However, the double B and lower rated profile book can see an incremental addition owing to the fact that many of the book is getting downgraded. So, uh, across brokerages, target price has been cut. The range which was at 600 to 700 rupees per share has now declined to uh, 530 to 620 per share. However, the recommendation is on the positive side, that is buy or overweight, owing to the fact that the valuations currently look very attractive. Okay, thanks a lot for that. Let's see how this plays out. But here's a quick recap of the top stocks. I think we have 20 today, not 10. Stocks expected to gain Kotak Mahindra Bank, Manapuram Finance, Biocon, AU Small Finance, SBI Life, PNB, uh, Elpro International, JNK Bank, Fortis, Tata Metallics, IEX, Jindal Stainless, Hisar, Thermax, Scient, <laughs> LNT, and Hawkins Cooker. Oh, she's giving me all the red stocks, <laughs> and you're in red. Okay. Red stocks uh, Axis Bank, uh, Sriram City Union, ID. BA Bank, Jubilant Life, Automotive, Stampings, Rallis, SL Propac and Gut. Okay, so we lost our breath uh, <laughs> talking about all of those stocks. But we'll discuss them with our guests on the other side, our technical experts, Sudarshan Sukhani.